Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at how to create a glitch sort of text load effect in Webflow, page load effect. And um, instead of just explaining it to you guys with words, I'm just going to reload my page and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so we have a glitchy text, as you can see here, that scales, and then it fades out to reveal the slotty animation of the AirPods Pro. Okay, so I'll play that one more time. We have a glitch text effect that again scales and it fades out and then we get this um, Lottie animation. Okay, so this should be really simple, um, but it requires a little bit of advanced sort of techniques in the interactions panel, but I'm just gonna flip over to my Webflow tab and let's just get started into doing it. So the first thing that we're going to do is just sort of um, make a div block that's going to contain our AirPods Pro that we sort of don't really want to um, like touch for the rest of this because we are not going to, that's not the sort of main focus. So that's why I'm just going to create it now and we're just going to leave it. Oh, maybe have some from a previous project. Okay, some classes. Anyway, so like I was saying, we'll create a hero, right? And it's just going to have a width of 100% and a height of 100 VH, just so that it's, again, taking up that whole screen. Uh, I'm going to give it a background color of black. And then I'm just going to drag in my Lottie animation. Great. So I'll just drag that in here. And again, you can find these assets linked down in the description box below. So I'm just going to give this a really simple sort of width of 75%. Let's make that 50 and in our hero section, I'll just set the flex settings so that we are centered. That's all I'm going to do for this hero section. It's really simple. Again, it's not the focus of this video. Okay, moving on to creating our um, actual interaction. If I just reload. Now, the first thing that we're going to create is a similar to div to that of this hero. We're going to make a new sort of div block and we're going to call this the loader, right? So this is essentially going to be have the same exact styles. So it's going to have a width of 100% and a height of 100 VH. It's going to have that flex and it's going to have that background of black. The only real thing that we're changing from this to the hero is we're going to make sure that it's set to position fixed. Now what position fixed does is it essentially just uh, positions the loader at the top or um, above everything else on the screen at all times. Now that's really helpful because again, it's a loader, we want it to be on top of everything else, right? So I'm just gonna hit position fix and then hit this last sort of full icon right here. Now, um, I'm also gonna give it a Z index of something really huge, like a thousand maybe. That way it's on top. As you can see, the sort of AirPods um, disappeared after we put it, uh, gave it a Z index of a thousand. That just makes sure that, that this is above in the sort of hierarchical, hierarchical order of the elements. Okay, great. So now inside of here, we are going to create our sort of logo text right here. So that's going to be really simple. We're just going to grab another div and I'm going to paste it inside here. And I'm going to call this a uh, text wrapper. Okay. This is also just going to have some flex settings, and that's it. That's all we're going to do. Okay, now inside of here, here's where things get interesting. So we're going to put in um, a heading, and I might as well just call this text, okay? And we're going to pick a cool font for this. Now, I picked one that I thought looked pretty cool. Now, this doesn't come up default in Webflow. We have to add fonts using Google, so I'm just going to do that. And this is really cool because I, after doing a little bit of searching, I found the font that I wanted, whose name I cannot remember now. So let me just look that up. Yeah, you're not always going to get the fonts that you want using um, Webflow uh, or Webflow's default fonts. So I love looking through here and trying to find. Okay, so the one that I wanted is called Press Start. Okay, there. Perfect. Just hit Add. And now if we close out this tab and we just reload, we should be able to um, use that font. Okay, great. So I'll grab that, maybe give it a size of 4 AM. So it's pretty big, but not too big. Height can be one. And then let's just set 
font. Okay, press start. There we go. I'll make it white so that we can actually see what's going on. And I'll type something in, like AirPods. Um, I do want it to be all capitalized, so I'll go ahead and mess with those settings right here. And I think I want to give it a little bit of letter spacing. As you can see, the R and the P are sort of a little bit close together. 1.4 maybe. Okay, that looks good. And that's pretty much it for our text. We're just going to have this, okay? You can have, again, the normal font weight. Okay, so now I'm just going to duplicate this three times, okay? And what we're going to do is we want them to be positioned on top of each other, right? So I'm going to grab uh, this text, right? This um, text that we have here. And I'm going to hit position absolute. This, again, just sort of pastes um, all three of these texts because they all have that same position absolute right on top of each other. And we're going to make sure that um, our text wrapper is set to position relative. Otherwise, it has no width. Like, you can see that it's really small, right? So let's hit relative, and then, okay. Now, what is the next thing that we're gonna do? The next thing that we're actually gonna do is set different colors for our other texts, right? So for example, this is the red one, and I wanna give it a different color, so. Let's go and paste that in. This is, you can't see the color right now, you can see it if I, Give it some margin. There you go. You can see that color. And I'll do the same thing for this one, except I'll give this one a combo class of blue so that I can paste in my other color. Great. Let's grab this. And okay, cool. Now, what is happening here? All right. So now what's happening here is that this particular piece of text is coming, again, on top of... Um, our white text, but we want our white text to be on top always. So I'm going to grab that first text and I'll just give it a combo class and make sure this says 100%. <clears throat> okay, this just ensures that um, it's above the rest of the piece of text in terms of the color. Okay, so we're done with that aspect. Now I think we're ready to move on and go into the interaction. So let's create a new page load animation, and I'm going to call this glitch text animation. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be grabbing um, this red piece of text right here, and we're going to be setting a move animation on it. That's essentially how we're going to get that glitch effect. We're just going to move the red one and the blue one in opposite directions to create that glitch effect. Okay, so this, I just grabbed the red one, and what I'm gonna do to this one is I am going to give it an X position or an X moving position of 1%. This just moves it 1% to the right, okay? I also want the duration to be pretty small, so let's do that, 0.1, and I'll hit class, okay. So it's just like a really quick sort of glitch and that's essentially what we want right we're also going to move it down a little bit so let's say maybe two percent down okay so again a really like sort of slight change now while we are moving um the x uh while we're moving this red text um to the right by one percent and down by two percent we want to be moving the blue left by one percent and up by two percent so how do we do that well in webflow um it's, it's really easy to do that. We just have to say negative, right? So instead of do, having positive 1%, you do negative 1%, and then you go, instead of going 1% to the right, you go 1% to the left, okay? Same thing with the Y. Instead of going 2% down, we're going to go negative 2%, which just means going up, okay? Perfect. So, like, really slight changes. Now, if we grab this text and we hit that same duration of 0.1, and then if we do it, Okay, so it's like a really small glitch, right? Now we are just gonna continue doing this, right? So what this means is we are gonna grab that first text again, and I'm gonna move it maybe 2% this time, and 2% to the right, and maybe I'll move it, or leave it the same at 2% down, okay? And I'll grab the um, blue, and I'll move it negative 2%, and leave it the same from before, okay? So, now, what this should be creating is 
a glitch effect. But now we have some easing set on it and we don't want that. So let's do point 0.1 again. Okay. And we can also just grab these and we can just do a um, zero and zero. And then we can do zero and now what this does is it creates that glitch, right? So now maybe uh, once we go to 0% here, um, what we can do is we can grab this red text again. Oh, the red should be in the front. Okay, so the red text again. And maybe this time, instead of moving it 1% to the right and 2% down, I might want to move it 2% to the right and 3% down. Okay? And we can just do the exact opposite with the... Um, with the blue, we just move it negative 2% to the left and negative 3%, or that just means 3% up, okay? So again, make sure that that duration is 0.1 second, uh, uh -oh, 0 0.1, and then we'll just duplicate this again. Uh oh, We'll just duplicate these pieces of text, which we just bring it back to zero again so that we can place it right after this one. Okay, I think we're creating that glitch effect now. Um, maybe we want to make it go on for a little bit longer. So maybe instead of 0.1, we do 0.2. Um, it's all about playing around a little bit. Okay. Okay, great. Now, I think what I want to do in my next sort of step is have this red and this blue text sort of move, um, have a more drastic change in the y-axis. So they move up and down a little bit more. So for that, what I'll do is... Well, our previous y was, or the one before zero, was 2%. So maybe I'll make the x stay the same, but I'll have the y jump up all the way to 5%, right? Or maybe let's make that 7%. Let's be bold. So we'll grab this one again, and we'll do the exact opposite for the blue, right? So I can be negative 2%. I leave it at 2. Yep, negative 2%. And negative 7%. And then again, we're just going to duplicate the interesting shift and right clicking to duplicate. And we're going to place this zero, zero right at the end. Yep. And make sure that they have that same duration of 0.1. Okay. Right. Do they all? Okay. I think I'm going to have this more drastic change have a longer duration of maybe 0.2. Let's try that. Okay. And then I think we should just start bringing it down. So this went from um, negative, so it went for, uh, to 2, 7, and then before it was 2, 3, and then it was, uh, before that, it was 1, 2, right? So let's go ahead and do, have that effect. That's going to be really easy. I think we just have to copy and paste. So this, for that, we can just grab... The more recent one, so that's two, three. I'm gonna hit duplicate and I'll bring it all the way at the end here. And then before two, three, we had zero, zero. Let me duplicate that as well, bring that all the way to the end. And then finally, we'll bring it back to our starting position. Hitting duplicate so that we can save time here and then save. So now if we go, okay, I think we're creating that glitch effect. Let's go through that one more time. I think we should slow it down just a little bit in some parts. That's what I'm sensing right now. I think we can leave and then wait, let's duplicate the zero zero one more time so that we can, uh oh, wait a second. Let's duplicate the zero zero one more time. Let's place that at the end here. Okay, let's try. Okay, great. Um, I do want this to take a little bit longer, so maybe this can be 0.2, and this can be 0.3. Let's try that. Okay. Yep, I think that looks good. I think it's actually best if we might as well just get rid of this 2-3 um, phase we have here. I think that's creating a little bit too many steps for this particular animation. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think that looks way better. Um, we should, we might try an easing, so I'm just hitting shift and grabbing all of them, right? And I'm going to go into my easing and pick something that's a little bit um, 
and drastic, like maybe out elastic. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that definitely is giving the vibe of like a glitch effect. Let's try out back, maybe. Okay, that looks good too. Let's try out bounce. They all seem very glitch effecty to me. Okay, I think I liked out elastic best. Not that's that's too harsh, I feel. Let's do out circ. Okay, I think that looks great. Let's hit save. Um, now, really, the last part of this animation is just to grab this whole loader and have the opacity go all the way down to zero so that we can see our text. Okay, I want to give this a little bit of delay. So once the glitch effect happens, we maybe have one second and then it fades out. Okay, so let's view this. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's really it for this um, interaction. I know it was a short one, but hopefully you guys learned something. And um, if you like this video, leave a like, uh, comment down below, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!